Let's get some dinner. You still like Italian? Ah, uh, Italy. It's a dream destination for foodies worldwide. Italian food is unmatched in the culinary world. However, not all Italian food is created equal. Here are 10 Italian foods that no one actually eats in Italy. I'm making a spaghetti angel. Spaghetti with meatballs. Did you know that the food you eat becomes energy? Boom, that's spaghetti. Spaghetti and meatballs may seem like a quintessential Italian dish, but it's actually not Italian at all. This delicious and iconic pasta dish is as American as apple pie and baseball. It was first served in the land of Yankee Caps and Jay-Z. Food historians believe Italian immigrants living in the Big Apple started adding meatballs to spaghetti as far back as the late 1800s. It's no wonder why so many New York chefs brag about their spaghetti and meatballs. That's a spicy meatball! Meat was plentiful in old New York, so Italian immigrants went all out and started adding ground beef and pork to just about everything. In Italy, no one eats spaghetti and meatballs, at least not together. The combination is so reviled by Italian chefs that many mock the dish and call it fake Italian food. Italians prefer their meatballs without pasta. In fact, meat and pasta are rarely mixed together, and meatballs are often served as appetizers instead. That might seem strange at first, but keep in mind that Italian meatballs are usually only the size of golf balls. Gigantic baseball-sized meatballs are something you'll only find on dinner plates in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Garlic bread. No garlic bread. Okay, we need to stay calm. Garlic bread and spaghetti go together like Buzz and Woody, but real Italians won't touch the stuff. But why, you ask? They're so good together. It's because garlic bread isn't really Italian at all. It might seem authentic, but it's absolutely not. It would be much more accurate to say that garlic bread is Italian-American. Sure, garlic bread has its roots in Italy, but the modern-day version of garlic bread that we all know and love is a perfect example of fake Italian food. Fake, 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 fake. In Italy, bruschetta is the go-to appetizer. It's what real Italians eat. Think of it as the classier and more sophisticated cousin to garlic bread. So what's the truth? true history of garlic bread? Well, the famous appetizer rose to prominence in the good old U.S. of A way back in the 1940s when Frank Sinatra was crooning and Charlie Chaplin was hamming it up on the big screen. No one knows for sure exactly when garlic bread was first eaten in the United States, but it's likely that Italian-American immigrants came up with the delightful snack while reminiscing about bruschetta. Fettuccine Alfredo. Fettuccine Alfredo. There's no question that the pasta you'll find in Italy is far healthier than the pasta in America. For starters, Italians rarely use cream in their pasta sauces. That's why you won't see fettuccine Alfredo on the menu when you're in Milan for Fashion Week. Alfredo sauce, which is made with piles of Parmesan cheese and copious amounts of heavy cream, was perfected in America, but its origins can be traced back to Italy. One popular theory is that a fellow named Alfredo Di Lelio created the scrumptious sauce for his nauseous wife. She apparently couldn't keep any food down after giving birth, so Alfredo whipped up an irresistible sauce. Alfredo's signature fettuccine was a hit, and he soon started serving it at his mother's restaurant. Italians couldn't get enough of the stuff, so Alfredo opened up his own restaurant. It turns out that story is a bunch of malarkey. While there is a kernel of truth to the tall tale, the reality is that what we know as Alfredo sauce was likely invented by an Italian immigrant who wanted to Americanized fettuccine al burro, aka pasta with butter. Of course, by Americanize, we mean make more fattening. Alfredo Di Lelio's signature pasta bears little resemblance to Americanized fettuccine Alfredo. It's far more likely that he simply added extra butter to his wife's plain pasta. Step three, I put it on some pasta, and that's the recipe! He probably didn't use Parmesan and heavy cream in his original recipe. Caesar salad. Ron, would you like some salad? 
<laughs> Since I am not a rabbit, no, I do not. Many people think that the Caesar salad was named after famous Roman Emperor Julius Caesar, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Truth is stranger than fiction because the Caesar salad was actually invented in Mexico by Italian restaurateur Caesar Cardini. Why doesn't Taco Bell sell Caesar salads? It sounds like they're missing out on a golden opportunity. How about a Caesar salad crunch wrap supreme? Come on, you know you would want to try it. You could say that Cardini was the MacGyver of Italian food because he invented Caesar salad by combining whatever he had available in the kitchen. Legend has it that Cardini invented the Caesar salad way back in the 1920s. Cardini was in a pickle right before the busy 4th of July weekend. His Tuana restaurant was low on food, so he had to improvise like Wayne Brady. He was frantic and desperate, but Cardini was an eternal optimist and, quite frankly, a genius businessman. He combined garlic, parmesan, croutons, romaine lettuce, olive oil, and Worcestershire sauce together to create the Caesar salad. And the rest was history. His restaurant, Caesar's, is still in operation to this day. Foodies refer to it as the classiest joint in Tuana because waiters will prepare a Caesar salad tableside for any customer who wants one. If you want the best Caesar salad in the world, head to Mexico, not Italy. Mozzarella sticks. Now now describe what you taste. Cheese. Okay, this one might seem fairly obvious, but mozzarella sticks aren't Italian. Italians love eating mozzarella cheese, but dipping it in batter and deep frying it is something Americans do. Mozzarella sticks may be one of the most popular items on the menu at Olive Garden, but they're the furthest thing from authentic Italian food. Come to think of it, there probably isn't a single thing on the Olive Garden menu that could be classified as authentic Italian cuisine. Mozzarella dates all the way back to the 1st century AD. Its origins can be traced to southern Italy, and it was first made using sheep's milk. Today, cow's milk mozzarella is far more popular. Fresh mozzarella. Mozzarella is meant to be served fresh, so it didn't make it to the West until the early 20th century. Refrigeration made it possible to transport mozzarella all over the world. Fridges can do everything from preserving cheese to saving Indiana Jones. The mozzarella sticks we know and love today are a much more recent creation. The Olive Garden has been serving mozzarella sticks since its inception back in 1982 when Eddie Murphy was still on SNL and Knight Rider was one of the most popular shows on TV. Before they became a staple on the Olive Garden menu, mozzarella sticks were served at bowling alleys and sports bars in the late 1970s. Today, mozzarella sticks can be found everywhere from the frozen food aisle to the Burger King drive through Chicken Parmesan Jean. Chicken parm is chicky chicky parm parm. What do you do when you're feeling down in the dumps? That's easy. Just eat some chicken parmesan. It's one of the most popular comfort foods on the planet. You don't even have to be Italian to enjoy this delicious dish because truth be told, it's not really Italian at all. The closest thing that you'll find to chicken parmesan in Italy is baked eggplant. I bet she orders the eggplant parmesan like it's something fancy. Sure, eggplant with parmesan tastes pretty good, but it's just not not the same. Chicken Parmesan is yet another example of faux Italian fare. It's faker than that Rolex you bought from the guy on the sidewalk. It may not be authentic, but it tastes so, so good. It might even taste better in sandwich form. The king knows how much people love Chicken Parmesan. Burger King's Chicken Parmesan sandwich sounds really good right about now. Pepperoni Pizza. Pizza time. Everyone knows that American pizza bears absolutely no resemblance to real Italian pizza, but pepperoni pizza might be the least Italian pizza of all. Italian pizzerias, or as Gilbert Gottfried would call them, pizza stores, don't serve meat lovers pizzas. Stuffed crust pizza is out of the question, too. Those are the kinds of pies you can only chow down on in the good old US of A. You're probably dying to get your hands on some Pizza Hut right about now. Who can resist that crispy? be crust and gooey cheese. <laughs> If you order pepperoni pizza in Italy, you'll get a pie that's completely different. In fact, it probably won't have any meat at all. In Italy, pepperone means pepper, or more precisely, bell pepper. When Italians immigrated to the U.S., dialects mixed and merged. Italian Americans soon started using the word pepperoni to refer to meat rather than veggies. Soon after, homesick Italian immigrants in 
invented a brand new type of sausage that was inspired by spicy meats from the old country. They were struggling to find a name for this new dry salami sausage. Thus, pepperoni was born. It didn't take long before pepperoni made its way to antipasto plates, sandwiches, and of course, pizza. If you find yourself in need of a pepperoni pizza fix while you're in Italy, don't worry. Simply ask for pizza with salami. Many restaurants in Italy call salami pizza pepperoni pizza because so many American tourists are confused by authentic pepperoni pizza. Can you blame them? Pepperoni pizza without pepperoni is like a Big Mac without the special sauce. Marinara sauce. The sauce. Oh, my on The sauce. Continue. Remember when Polly Walnuts asked for red sauce on his pasta and was mocked by the real Italian mafia? Well, give the Sopranos writers a round of applause because it turns out that's entirely accurate. Italians almost never use heavy tomato sauce on their pasta. It might be a staple at Sunday dinners in Jersey, but in Italy, pasta sauce is light on tomatoes and heavy on olive oil and herbs. It turns out that delicious looking prison sauce that Vinny cooked up in Goodfellas wasn't really Italian at all. If you're homesick for mom's homemade tomato sauce when you're in Florence, try ordering pasta al pomodoro. It's light, delicate, and extremely delicious. The fresh tomato, olive oil, and basil make for a tasty lunch. It's about as close as you're going to get to a pasta with marinara sauce in Italy. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Spaghetti alla puttanesca is another option if you're hankering for mom's homemade marinara sauce. It's a traditional pasta from Naples that combines tomatoes, olive oil, garlic, spaghetti, and capers. The result is a dish far tastier than a generic jar of marinara sauce poured over cheap spaghetti noodles. Italian dressing. Let me handle this. Uh, scusi, baba da boopy? Don't let the name fool you. Italian dressing has absolutely nothing to do with Italy. Italians have a lot more class when it comes to salad dressing. They add a little bit of vinegar, a pinch of salt, and the perfect amount of oil to their leafy greens. If it's done correctly, the salad will glisten like a holographic Pokemon card. In Italy, dressing a salad is an art form. You'll never find a salad swimming and dressing at a real Italian restaurant. Good luck with that. A bottle of Kraft Italian dressing contains just about every spice known to man, and Italians would never make things so complicated. The bottled version even has sugar in it. That sort of defeats the purpose of eating a salad. Even still, Italian dressing is so popular in the States that just about everyone has a homemade recipe. Even Michael Scott is a salad dressing aficionado. Baked ziti. Today we're going to be making the students my tasty baked ziti. Baked ziti may be tasty, but you can't really call it authentic Italian cuisine. A more accurate description of baked ziti would be Italian-American comfort food. In fact, it's actually more of a casserole than a pasta dish. Only an Italian-American immigrant could create an astounding casserole pasta hybrid like baked ziti. Who can resist all that regatta, mozzarella, and parmesan? Not me. Obviously. It's a cheese lover's dream come true. Another reason baked ziti is so beloved is the fact that it's a fairly simple recipe. If you don't have ziti, no problem. Any tube-shaped pasta will do. Penne and rigatoni are both acceptable substitutions. Italians do love to eat baked pasta, aka pasta al forno. But baked ziti is hard to come by in Italy. It's one of the most famous Italian-American foods of all time, but it's not really authentic. Yeah, no biggie. We're serving up more great videos. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment.